And now we'd like to welcome Jim Yang, Senior Manager of Canadian Immigration at Envoy Global, and Daphne Wong, Team Lead of Canadian Immigration at Envoy Global. Daphne and Jim, welcome both. Thanks for joining us today. Happy to be here, Finn. So we're Thanks, here to talk about uh, Canada's H-1B visa holder work permit, uh, which was unveiled by the Canadian government earlier this month, and it's been a very fast-moving story in the news. Jim, would you mind outlining uh, what happened with this work permit, where it came about, and then Jim and Daphne, what your reaction has been to how quickly uh, this program has moved? Uh, yeah, most definitely, Finn. I think it was uh, quite a big announcement, right? Um, shocked, uh, obviously, a lot of people in the United States and even here in Canada that, you know, this program was being rolled out. Um, the H-1B open work permit program, you know, that was announced was actually part of a, you know, tech talent strategy that was announced by the Canadian um, immigration minister uh, in, in June of this year. And um, the goal of this program is really to attract global talent, especially well, targeted in the U.S., right, um, to fill in-demand IT occupations here in Canada. Um, actually, in 2022, there was a immigration levels plan that was, you know, um, that was released and it actually indicated that, you know, Canadian uh, Canada is one of the countries that has a low birth rate and um, we're struggling to, you know, meet the uh, economic demands and the talent demands. Um, here just locally in Canada. And, you know, the purpose of these strategies and programs is really to use immigration as a driving vehicle to help the Canadian economy and meet its, um, you know, its in-demand occupations. Daphne, this work permit had a cap of 10,000 applications and it took under 48 hours from when the application opened for those 10,000, that 10,000 uh, cap to be filled. What's your reaction to that? It's surprising, but not surprising at the same time, I would say, because I, since it's so new, we didn't really know how how it would be received. But at the same time, we all know, you know, what the state of um, the H-1B holders uh, and, and the difficulties that have been, uh, that have come up uh, in the U.S. especially to, to keep these H-1B holders and whether or not they meet the lottery and things like that. So I think it was expected that it would fill up very quickly. I don't think we expected that it would fill up in less than 48 hours. Um, but at least I'm I'm just thankful that, you know, when they announced that it was closed, that they actually posted it online. Unlike uh, some years ago, back in, I want to say 2014, um, when there was a Canadian experience class uh, cap for a permanent residency, they invited everyone to submit applications through that uh, via paper, but never said when it was closed. So we would only receive the notice that it was closed after the applications got mailed back. So the fact that they've actually put this up um, and announced that it was closed is uh, at least, um, you know, it doesn't waste people's time and, and submitting applications only to get them returned back. This is obviously a very new program, Daphne, but, you know, like we just said, 10,000, at least 10,000 people applied mm -hmm. uh, for it. Um, from what we know about what information the Canadian government has released about this new program, about how long will the application process take? When will folks know whether or not they uh, they they are approved or denied for this work permit? Yeah, the, that's a great question. So right now, the posted processing time is listed as six weeks. From experience, we all know that uh, post the, the posted processing times can also change without notice, um, and the updated processing times online may not actually be what it actually is. So it could still be shorter or longer, but it is quoted right now at six weeks. Jim, you mentioned some of the reasons why the Canadian government rolled out this program in the first place, and obviously we just talked about the immediate success uh, and demand for this, this work permit um, was evident um, and how many people applied and how quickly they applied. Um, do you think that the Canadian government will expand the cap in the future for this program, or is it too early to tell? Yeah, I think in my personal opinion, you know, I do think that um, the Canadian government does want to, um, you know, ex expand on these programs, right? Uh, there's no definite answer at this moment of, you know, whether 
they are going to be, you know, continuing this program later on, uh, you know, or next year. But with these pilot programs, they always need to kind of review the success of it and also get the community's feedback. Um, but as you know, as Daphne mentioned, it filled up within 48 hours. Um, their Canadian immigration levels plan is to, you know, meet a certain amount of immigration per year. And these pilot programs are ways to, you know, help them meet the targets as well as get the um, talent that they need here in Canada. So I do think that, you know, this program could have a potential of reopening up next year and, um, we also have to see, you know, with the ten uh, with the ten thousand applicants, you know, some might meet, you know, might not meet the eligibility criteria, and some also might be, you know, um, inadmissible, right? Depending on certain criteria, so, you know, the IRCC also needs time to kind of sort through the applicants that you know applied for the uh, applied for this program, and who's to say you know maybe within a few months they also have some additional spots available once they kind of filter out the batch as well. So you know that's something that we're um, looking forward to you know um, to seeing if they will reopen this program and also you know if the Canadian government is going to be um, also piloting other you know similar programs like these as well on other countries. Um, to, to meet its immigration targets. Daphne, one question I've seen popped up uh, online uh, with all the chatter around this program. Again, it was so fast moving that there's a lot of questions being out there, people looking for answers, uh, is if an individual you know, applies for this permit, uh, is approved and moves to Canada, is there a pathway for permanent residence uh, for them? Uh, is that something that they can look into? Yeah, so for permanent residency, there are lots of different options. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, just because they get through this, um, it gives them, you know, the automatic right for permanent residency. So there are different uh, because of their uh, of the different routes available with different eligibility. They would need to look into that to see what they could qualify for. But one of the uh, the most used routes of permanent residency is express entry, which is points based. And one of the criteria of that or one of the points factors for that is for Canadian work experience. So if they do come into Canada under that open work permit and get gainful employment, that's qualifying, then they could potentially use that as Canadian work experience to boost up their points as well. So it uh, long story short, it does give them opportunities, uh, what, especially if they get the Canadian work experience, but it is still possible that they can qualify for express entry or uh, rather permanent residency uh, without having come to Canada yet. So Jim, to qualify for this work permit, um, an individual has to have an approved H-1B in the U.S. What advantages does an individual have or what incentives do they have to apply for this permit if they already are on an H-1B in the United States? Yeah, that's a great question, Finn. I think one of the benefits is that this program is for a open work permit, so it doesn't need to be tied to a specific employer here in Canada. So it allows the holder of this, you know, H-1B open work permit to be employed with any employer in Canada and to be in any location. So I think that's benefit number one. Um, the second benefit is that for uh, holders of this H-1B open work permit, they can also be eligible to apply for, you know, spousal work permits for, you know, any accompanying partners um, and for, you know, study permits or visitor records, you know, for the children as well. So I know that, you know, for the spouses of some H-1B holders, you know, in the United States, you know, their spouse can only apply for work authorization, you know, at a certain stage. So here in Canada, if they get the work, you know, the principal applicant gets the work permit, um, then the spouse is also eligible to apply for a spousal open work permit. And then finally, I think there's advantages in like permanent residency as well. Um, as many are aware, you know, getting obtaining permanent residency here is a lot shorter of a process. It still takes, you know, a couple of years, but at this, you know, compared to the United States, the duration is a lot shorter. So, you know, if there's interest for applicants of this work permit, you know, to remain in Canada, um, there's ways to obtain PR and, um, and it is a faster process overall. Well, thank you very much both for your time and for answering some of the preliminary questions on this new program. Uh, I hope to have you both back soon to do another video um, as this 
you know, as news progresses uh, on the program and we learn more uh, to share those insights with the audience, but really appreciate both of your time. Thanks, Thanks Ben. ben.